Hello and welcome back to the channel. This time we're gonna do something new, something really cool, which is we're actually gonna teach you how to play Crystal Maiden in 10 minutes or less. Yes, you've heard correctly. You're gonna learn how to play Crystal Maiden from the first minute to the end of the game in 10 minutes or less. That's five actually. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jeff and what we mainly do in this channel is we actually teach players how to play support and especially how to lane support. Of course, if you're stuck in your bracket and you wanna grind and you wanna gain more MMR, make sure you check down the link and join our coaching program, which is almost guaranteed that you'll actually grind and you will be able to play support at its best. So what are we waiting for? Let the timer start and go. So Crystal Maiden is an intelligent hero, a lane dominator that requires you know, having a lot of mana. So what do you need to do to actually win a game of Dota 2 as Crystal Maiden? Step one is to actually pick Crystal Maiden. If you're a Chad player and the Chad support, just like myself, you can pick and you should pick Crystal Maiden position four because I think she's absolutely bust right now. But if you're a little bit more scared and a little bit more afraid, Crystal Maiden position five, it's still OP and you should actually pick it. So step one, pick Crystal Maiden. Step two, you buy your starting items. If you're a position five, I would suggest a little bit more tangos, a little bit more mangos, and a little bit more clarities. Whereas if you're in position four, I would suggest some more stat, just like circlet, mandle, and of course you buy in both of the scenarios a lot of mangos. Step number three, what you wanna do is do not contest the bounty rune. I cannot name how important this is. And also I cannot name how many times I've died again and again and again trying to actually pick up this bounty rune unless you have a Jaguar. You feel so confident and you actually go with your team to contest bounty runes. What I would suggest in this scenario is to actually skill Frostbite. It's a lot of damage, low cooldown and will allow your team to actually get multiple right clicks while the enemy is rooted. If for some reason you face a lot of heroes, make sure to actually go for Crystal Nova to reduce the amount of damage you will receive. And we go into the lane stage. If you haven't actually skilled a spell yet, 9 out of 10 times I would suggest you should actually pick Crystal Nova and secure the range creep. And there is an idea before that. You want to secure the range creep because A, it's going to give you a lot of gold. B, it's going to give you a lot of experience. And we want to get a lot of experience. The point and the goal with Crystal Maiden is to get our first power spike, which is level 2 power spike, where you have Crystal Nova and first bite, and that's a lot of damage. It's small cooldown, therefore you can use it twice and pretty much blow up anyone. As a result though, we want to get level 2 before the opponents, so we want to secure the range creep. Now, you might play versus a hero like Undying, like Bane, that's really, really, really strong and she's gonna punch you all the time, so you will not be able to actually secure the range creep. So what do you do? You actually go for Frostbite level 1, which is a super cool spell as well, and it's actually better than Crystal Nova in a 1v1 scenario, because you can just Crystal Nova and just right click all the time. One of the things that you will learn with experience, the more you play Crystal Maiden, the better you'll become, is actually positioning, not only in the mid game, but in the laning stage as well. Crystal Maiden is a lane dominator that relies on actually using the spells again and again and winning the long-term region fight. But what is a catch here? If you have two high health heroes, for example, you play versus at what's called Marcy, she just jumps on you and gets you out of position and, well, you just die. So you need to be really cautious. Positioning is your best friend and your worst enemy. So you make sure that will not die. If you play versus this type of heroes, something like a Fluffy Hat or a Wing Lace, if you get to play versus Clockwork or Tasker, might be really cool for you. If you're a position 4, you can also consider getting level 2 Aura because you're gonna play with a lot of high health strength heroes that have mana issues and they're also pretty spammy. That's like a Legion Commander, Tidehunter, Mars, you start to get the idea. So going for Aura level 2 and then getting Frostbite level 3 is actually a perfect plan as well, depending on the situation. If I have a Tidehunter, I will usually suggest I will just go for Crystal Nova and then I will just go for Aura so we can just spam, spam, spam and perhaps kill a sneaky Slark that relies on actually right-clicking people but we never give him this option. The plan is to actually A. Secure the range trip, B. Take level 2 before them and from that point we're constantly gonna sip a lot of mangoes and a lot of clarities and that items are gonna be our priority because we want to get a lot of kills because we want to get a lot of levels and Crystal Maiden is a really high level dependent hero you want to get level 6 fast you want to get level 10 fast you want to get level 12 fast 
In terms of items, in the beginning, it would be ideal to have something like Tranquil Boots, Wand, Raindrops, which is incredible on Crystal Maiden, and the Fluffy Hat. These are our items. So as you understand, Crystal Maiden doesn't really care about having a lot of gold, rather than having a lot of experience, having level 5, level 6 to make plays. So, so far you're level 3, you're level 4, you're going in the lane says you got a couple of kills, but of course you're out of mana, so what do you do? Yes, you guessed correctly, you bring more mangoes, you bring more clarities, and of course, if you're a position 4, you should go to the mid lane and actually make a rotation to secure the range creep. If you're a position 5, stay on your lane, babysit your cry baby position 1. But if you're a position 4, go and gag the mid lane, especially if you play versus low mobility heroes, if you get to play versus Lesrak, versus Shadowfin. It's so easy for a Crystal Maiden to make moves on, the, on these heroes because they cannot really disengage from you and not only you deal a lot of damage but you actually hold them in position and you slow them a lot. So you actually get a kill in the mid lane or make an attempt and you actually try to secure the range trip. What do you do? You actually go back to the lane to your off laner or to the safe lane if you actually decided to contest the, the rune as a position 5 and you keep laning until you get to level 6. Do not forget though, by the time you have level 6, you still need to have full mana and a lot of mangoes and a lot of clarities to actually be able, if you're out of mana, to use the mangoes and constantly use more spells and if you're out of mana and the engagement is over, to use the clarity which is more value for gold. And all of this keeps going until you have level 6 which is your big power spike. Why is your big power spike? Because Freezing Field, two things. A will allow you to farm, B will allow you to kill. So the most obvious thing is to actually freezing field the enemy triangle. Yes, you've heard me correctly. They might have stacks, they might have actually stacked the triangle and the big camp as well. You can actually clear both with one freezing field. Plan B, you can actually stack your own triangle and you can actually farm it yourself. And if you actually have level six before 10 minutes in, you can actually easily do that. Hopefully, you'll see it somewhere here. B. You should actually kill heroes. If you play versus heroes that cannot really cancel your ultimate, like Slark, like Phantom Assassin, like Phantom Lancer, all these heroes will struggle to deal with your ultimate. So what do you do? You usually want to have someone to smoke with and chase them into the jungle to actually try and kill them. If for some reason you struggle to do that, you can actually go farm your dagger the way we just showed, which should be pretty easily. And then what you want to do is actually try to solo kill these heroes. So the plan is simple. Go farm your dagger and kill heroes or try to kill heroes and then keep killing the heroes. I will have to say though that Crystal Maiden is not as easy as being said. Positioning is really important, especially before the BKB. What does this mean? That means half of the heroes can actually cancel your ultimate. As a result, you need to be really cautious on when you will actually press your ultimate. If for some reason you will actually fail it, all your strength and all the investment in that spell is actually going to waste. By 15 or 16 minutes in, ideally, you want to have Blink Dagger. And of course, if you play versus Faceless Void, Slark, Phantom Lancer, Phantom Assassin, even Terror Blade, all these heroes are easily killable by Blink, Frostbite, Ultimate, or Blink, Ultimate, Frostbite, Crystal Nova, if you have the Shard, where you can actually use your spells while you cast Freezing Field. I can't actually recall how many times I've killed a Faceless Void with my Blink Dagger and my Shard and how many times I've done that even before having these items just by Frostbite and Freezing Field a Faceless Void that thought you could kill a poor Crystal Maiden. People do not actually respect the hero and they think they can kill him but in reality they don't. So you my friend can take advantage of that. By now you have Blink Dagger and Shard which is our second item and the good thing about Shard is that it gives you a crap load of damage. That's it in reality. It's so much damage that even heroes like Visage and PL, you just melt all the illusions, you just melt the familiars. Even versus Templar Assassin, many times you can go 
go through the refractions and deal a lot of damage. But you need to be really cautious when you go into a hero like Templar Assassin and the hero like Cassier, which I died many times as well. Before you get BKB, there is gonna be a big gap. So in that situation, you're trying to go on heroes that A, they don't have a way to deal with your freezing field or B, they have used their stun and they can't use it on you. For example, a hero like Glestrak or a hero like Windranger that has used Sackle Shot, you can jump on them and kill them after they use their stun. In terms of team fighting, here's the secret. You don't really want to dump into the team fight unless the fights start. What you want to do is jump into the back line before you have the BKB especially if you get to play versus heroes that can cancel your ultimate even with BKB. Heroes like Batrider, heroes like Bane, heroes like Clockwork. It's super important that you will initiate after you see these big team fight abilities and piercing BKB spells. Otherwise, all this investment with the dagger and the shard and the BKB, again, they are going to waste. So make sure, my friend, you're gonna be really cautious. But you're gonna be really cautious because you have subscribed in this channel, haven't you? As I said, I advise you to go Dagger, Shard into BKB. But of course, the classic Glimmer K plus 4 stuff is also a really solid option, especially if you're playing from behind and you haven't won the laning stage, and especially if you play versus heroes that Warsaw is really good at, like Slark, like Clockwork. So you can still go for that, but the problem is that you're not a core, you do not have the ability to actually kill someone. After that point, items like Lincoln's, Shansen Kaya, Aganim's, Yasakaya, they're all perfect. You can buy whatever you want, but the good thing is that you only 10k gold, and Blink, Shard, Bikib are not that much gold. Now, one might say, Jeff, I can't really farm this. It's actually too expensive. And I have actually one advice for you. The secret as a support to have a lot of gold is to not die. You can die as many times as you want after you have these items because it doesn't really matter. All of a sudden, you're a core. You can just jump on any support, blink BKB ulti or blink ulti BKB, and they just die. So a position 5 or a position 4, if you're Chad, can actually solo kill any support. That's insane. Maybe you don't realize how much important that is, but it is. Last advice. Three things that I really want to give you an advice. You should always buy Home of XP unless your support is really underleveled. Number two, Philosopher's Stone. No question asked. You should pick it unless you have some insane scale in position four, like Dawnbreaker, that also requires a lot of gold. Number three, Power Spike. Power Spike is level two. Do not forget to abuse Power Spike on level two. Your next Power Spike is level six, where you get your freezing field and you want to farm any enemy triangle, your triangle, or farming heroes that cannot really deal with your ultimate. Power Spike level 10, you get 250 health, that's super good, especially since you have Wand, Fluffy Hat, and Raindrops, therefore you're pretty tanky. Level 12, 18, 18. 20, where you get all the freezing field spells and talents, is where you are the strongest at. Make sure you abuse these spikes, because you're super strong. Did I make it on time? Did I actually make a Crystal Maiden guide in 10 minutes or less? It doesn't feel this way. But if you actually like this video, make sure you subscribe and press the like button because first of all, it boosts my ego and second of all, it motivates me and my editor to make more videos like that. If you're stuck on your bracket and you want to get MMR and you want to become better support, make sure you actually click the link down below, go to our website and actually apply for our coaching program which is almost guaranteed that will get you to your next medal. GG, Raza and I'll see you in the next video.